Before you release an application to clients, you should include appropriate error handlers. Although your interface is designed to help the user make correct decisions and enter proper data, you can never be sure what will happen in the real world. For example, there could be an attempt to save a file to a networked drive that has been disconnected, or there could be a stray bug that made it past your testing efforts. Using error traps in Visual Basic can tighten up your program and, at the very least, enable it to gracefully exit when a critical problem is encountered. Here we're running the Error Demo project. When we click the Error Demo command button, Visual Basic encounters the stop statement. This is one of the many ways Visual Basic can enter break mode. We've turned on an error trap in the click event for this button. Should an error occur, Visual Basic will jump to the Check Error label located later in the procedure. Since we're in break mode, we can begin walking our code by pressing F8 to see what processes are taken when an error occurs. When we move to the next line, Visual Basic is going to attempt to work with an object that doesn't exist in our program. That's invalid and will cause a runtime error. When we press F8 again, the bad line of code runs. Visual Basic immediately jumps to the first line in our error handler and is waiting for us to proceed. As we press F8, Visual Basic locates the appropriate error number, 424, and then shows the user a message box. Clicking OK returns us to the procedure, still in break mode. At this point, the error handler has been told to resume next. A resume next will send Visual Basic to the line of code immediately after the one that caused the error. When you use a resume next, the offending line of code never completes. This may affect how your program works. Now, Visual Basic will manually raise an error. This too will cause us to jump to the error trap. However, since the number is 53, we'll get a slightly different outcome. As we proceed through the code this time, we're asked if we'd like to try again. If we say yes, the resume statement, shown here, will send us back to the line that caused this error and attempt to run it again. Since this is basically an endless loop included for this demo, we'll answer no and the procedure runs itself out. When we release a program to users, there's always the chance an unexpected error may occur. Sometimes this comes from the user and sometimes it comes from bugs we missed. In either case, Visual Basic will terminate unless we include appropriate error handlers. Nothing is more annoying to a user than having a program crash, especially if they've entered a lot of data that didn't get saved. A properly designed error handler may be able to fix a problem and, if not, can be used to offer the user a last chance to save their work before the program stops.